Greetings. This is our seventh lecture video. Our elbow is analyze the cornering characteristics of tires. Before discussion of cornering properties, I just want to summarize what we have uh, discussed in our previous sessions. Okay. So in our previous session, we have discussed a lot about tractive properties of tires, how the tractive properties are greatly influenced by the factors, right? Okay. There are numerous factors that affect the tractive properties of tires. Those factors are vertical load, inflation pressure, surface friction and speed and so on. You can look at these uh, factors in a book of Fundamentals of Vehicle Dynamics by Dr. D. Thomas Gillespie. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the car running properties of tires. Right. To know the cornering properties of tires, you should know the vehicle wheel plane. We had a lot of discussion about tire axis systems in our classrooms. I hope you can remember that. Right. Now I have a question. What is wheel plane? How do you define? In SAE tire axis system, a wheel plane is generally defined as a center plane of the tire which is normal to the axis of rotation okay. now you take this as a wheel right okay this hole this is a center point of exactly line with point this is the center point of wheel okay. it has an axis at the center right okay which is going to rotate or spin about the axis that axis is called as spin axis, right? Okay. You can place this wheel with an uh, inward tilt, otherwise outward tilt, which is called as camber, right? Okay. So the wheel plane exactly matches with the placement of wheel. In discussion of cornering properties of tires, we should know about the slip angle and cornering force, how the slip angle affects the cornering forces of tires, right? So. This is a cut section view of tire and this one is a top view of tire, right? Okay. When a pneumatic tire is not subjected to any force perpendicular to the wheel plane, it will move along the wheel plane, right? If it is not subjected to any force, it will move along the wheel plane. If this is a wheel, it has a wheel plane exactly placed at the wheel how the wheel is placed right okay if this wheel is not subjected to any side force side force means in lateral direction right so if the wheel is not subjected to any side force in lateral direction the wheel will move, move along exactly at what wheel plane is desired right it move like this right okay if it is subjected to any force the character will change however a side force fs is applied on a tires tire center a lateral force will be developed at the tire contact patch right this is our tire tire or cut section view this is our tire contact patch patch if this wheel is subjected to a center side force in this direction F S so it will generate a lateral force at the contact patch of tires opposite to the side force right this is normally mentioned as F C so the lateral force will be developed and the tire will move along the angle of alpha this is what we call the slip angle and this phenomenon of side slip is mainly due to the lateral force applied of side force this is due to the lateral elastic elasticity of tire the slip angle is not mentioned here so if you apply the side force at the center of the wheel the cornering force or lateral force will develop at the contact patches of tires so 
actually before the application of side force the wheel will travel along the wheel plane which is placed but after the application of side force the wheel will is not going to move along wheel plane it actually gonna move in a angle of alpha right like like this so it will move along in this direction right a lateral force developed at the tire ground contact patch is usually called cornering force fc or f y alpha when camber angle is equal to zero f y y is a lateral direction alpha because of slip angle slip angle is mentioned as alpha so cornering force can be mentioned as f y alpha with zero camber angle the relationship between the cornering force and the side slip angle is fundamental importance to the directional control and stability of road vehicles when the tire is moving at a uniform speed in the direction of oa that is mentioned right okay the side force fs applied at the center of wheel and the cornering force f y alpha or fc is developed at the contact patches of tire and road surfaces are not usually a collinear forces right this is not a collinear force right i hope you know the meaning of collinear and non collinear forces so this is not a collinear force at small slip angles the cornering force in the ground plane is normally behind the side force you cannot see in a cut section view i just mention here see if you up this is a top view I, you know that so if you apply the side force in left hand direction of wheel i just drew fs direction the cornering force will develop at the contact patches of tires in top view actually this is this uh, cornering force is not exactly matches with the side force while looking from the top so is going to be here with some distance in opposite direction fc or fy alpha with a slip angle and no camber angle right it is going to be in some distance this distance is generally mentioned as tp which is called as pneumatic trail i just write here pneumatic trail right so as we mentioned the cornering force which is developed at the tire contact patches because of side force is not exactly matches with fs it is going to develop behind the side force of tires so it will create some amount of torque like if you take this as a wheel the whole which is a uh, here is a center so here it is going to be a side force so then cornering force will be here right here so the cornering force will tend to the wheel like this or this way so it creates some amount of torque or moment so can is it clear the side force will generate at the center of the tire so maybe you mention here actually it will generate at here we will look at the top looking from the top it will be here but the cornering force will behind the center of the tire so the cornering force will be at the line here mentioned right okay so if the cornering force acts here so it will move the vehicle sorry it will move the wheel in the direction of like this so it will rotate the wheel right like this so it gonna create some amount of moment this moment is what we call self aligning torque and it is one of the primary restoring moments which is help to steer the tire return to the original position after negotiating a turn the distance tp already i mentioned between the side force and cornering force is called as pneumatic trail 
uh, and the tag is a product of carnivine force and tp carnivine force and nematic trail right so this tag is generally called as self aligning tag which is going to reduce the driving effort sorry which is going to reduce the steering effort there are n number of investigation is going on uh, to find the relationship between slip angle and cornering force right here i have given the typical uh, graph of uh, slip angle and cornering force you can look here so slip angle in x direction and cornering force in y direction y direction so if an in, in an increment of slip angle there is an increment in cornering force so the slip angle here is used to to increase the cornering force so the self aligning torque can be increased because of increment in cornering force so the slip angle is here is used in positively here you can see that up to 4 degree of slip angle the cornering force is increasing linearly right so after certain period that is uh, for after the 4 degree of slip angle the cornering force will increase up to 20 degree but the increment is non linear so after 4 degree of slip angle the cornering force increased at lower rate right if the slip angle reaches the maximum value the car will start to slide pure sliding condition will attain after certain amount of slip angle so the slip angle value is maximum fixed for passenger cars and rest cars too so in passenger cars the maximum slip angle is about 16 to 18 degree in rest cars it will be maximum at 6 degree you can get a uh, maximum carrying force at slip angle of 6 degree in rest cars look at this picture so this graph shows this relationship between slip angle and carrying force for bias plate tires and radial plate tires so this is a road adhesion limit so more than this limit of friction the vehicle will start to slide it will attain a slip condition i mean now uh, to attain the pure sliding condition so within this limit we just draw the slip angle versus carrying force graph for bias plate and radial plate tires here you can see up to 4 degree the carrying force increases linearly after that it attains non linear but you can see the difference between the radial plate tires and bias plate tires actually what happens here the radial plate tires it increases linearly here look at this after that it increases non linearly in bias plate tires actually from the 0 degree to 16 degree it actually increases gradually look at this there is a difference between radial plate tires and bias plate tires so it creates self aligning torque quickly it creates self aligning torque gradually so this is the reason we are using bias plate tires in two wheelers because because controlling of steering is much easier than radial plate tires because in bias plate tires the self aligning torque is gradually increasing compared with radial plate tires it attains quickly so it is not measurable you know compared to bias plate tires right so maneuver is is much easier in bias plate tires when compared with radial plate tires used in two wheelers i mentioned as two wheelers not in four wheelers so in four wheelers we usually prefer radial plate tires because we attain self aligning torque quickly and we can attain vehicle performance higher than the bias plate tires right there are numerous factors that affect the cornering behavior of pneumatic tires the normal load on the tire strongly influences the cornering characteristics some typical results shown in this uh, graph which shows the graph which shows the relationship between the normal load and cornering force here it's just mentioned it can be seen here in a given slip angle the carrying force generally increases with an 
increase of normal load if the normal load increases with some amount of slip angle the carrying force actually increases look at here so already we have seen here like slip angle increases the carrying force will increase so if the normal load increases the carrying force also increases with an angle of slip uh, in alpha 20 it gives maximum carrying force with the increment of normal load compared to 12 8 4 and 2 however the relationship between the carrying force and the normal load is non-linear look at here this is just linear here after some period it gets non-linear so at 4 degree it thro throughout it gets non-linear conditions right generally the normal load is mentioned as f e z and the carrying force may be mentioned as f y generally right if uh, it is for slip angle it can mention as f y alpha but here i just mentioned about normal load it can be mentioned as f y instead of f y alpha to provide a measure for comparing the cornering behavior of different tires a parameter called cornering stiffness this cornering stiffness is denoted as c alpha is used which is used to measure the cornering stiffness this relationship behavior can be determined using this so it is defined as the derivative of cornering force with respect to the slip angle so c alpha is equal to derivative of cornering force f y alpha because of slip angle divided by derivative of slip angle do alpha the alpha is maybe limit to zero right so c alpha we generally called as cornering stiffness this cornering stiffness speaks about the relationship between the carrying force because of slip angle and the slip angle to evaluate the effect of normal load on the cornering ability of tires a parameter called cornering coefficient so which is defined as the cornering stiffness per unit normal load is is often used right so the cornering coefficient cc alpha sorry cc alpha equal to c alpha divided by f y so c c alpha means cornering coefficient with slip angle c alpha cornering stiffness f y unit load unit load in vertical direction right this is not f y actually it is f e z this is what we mentioned right so f e z means vertical load so it can be written as c c alpha equal to c alpha divided by f e z right so c c alpha means cornering coefficient here i just want to consolidate what the formulas we have developed here uh, cornering stiffness c alpha equal to do f y uh, divided by do alpha because of the slip right slip angle and uh, second formula is c c alpha carrying stiffness coefficient which is equal to c alpha divided by f z carrying stiffness divided by normal load coming back to our slip angle don't confuse the slip angle with longitudinal slip this slip angle creates lateral slip what we have discussed in our previous sessions are longitudinal slip this la that longitudinal slip because of the different velocity of tires or the contact patches right but this lateral slip because of the lateral direction force that is developed at the center of f e j f s actually it creates some amount of carrying force or the contact patches of tire and road surface behind the side force right okay so this uh, here you can see the gap that is called as pneumatic trail tp so if we pull pull the wheel at the ear ear part the wheel head forward head will tilt this direction that is why it creates some slip angle right okay so now you can understand what we what i mean by slip angle right okay so here it creates some amount of adding torque that is equal to the amount of force developed because of 
because of side force so fc into the gap between side force and uh, carrying force tp so aligning torque equal to fc into tp and look here look here fs and fc are opposite directions right so fc suppose in this direction the alpha will be here to here right as well as the slip angle the camber camber thrust also affects the carrying properties of tires you know what do you mean by camber right camber is just an inclination of wheel pin from a plane perpendicular to the road surface when it viewed from the front right its main purpose is to achieve the axial bearing pressure to decrease the king pin offset right so generally we can maintain the camber of a uh, uh, approximately from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5 in our cars but not more than 1 degree if it's supposed to more than 1 degree it creates some sort of wear in your tread contact patches so the inclination of camber from the vertical plane right so the angle between the vertical plane and the center plane of the wheel which is uh, actually normally a camber angle so outward tilt of the wheel is positive camber and inward tilt of the wheel is a negative camber so i just draw a positive camber angle right okay so this camber angle also the reason for side force developed at the contact patches here so which can be mentioned as fy at the contact patch force on contact patch right fy because of lateral direction mentioned as y because of camber angle fy gamma right okay so this is outward tilt so the conic goes in right hand direction so this lateral direction force can be named as camber thrust fy gamma as well as the carnaying stiffness c alpha we can develop a formula for camber stiffness c gamma equal to as well as derivative of fy gamma divided by derivative of gamma similar to the carnaying stiffness the normal load and the inflation present have an influence on the camber stiffness so the total lateral force fy is a sum of fy because of slip angle plus fy because of camber angle right so we know the value of fy alpha which is equal to c alpha alpha plus or minus we can use this plus or minus c gamma into gamma fy equal to you can send in any way now we can see this picture consider a tire in a steady state motion with a fixed slip angle alpha the shape of equatorial line bc in the contact area shown in this figure this is the path of tire which is going to following with a slip angle of alpha and it is immobile relative to the ground when no sliding is actually takes place here dotted line ab figure represent the projection of the portion of bc forward in front of the contact patch as the tire rolls right forward the points ab becomes the points bc like this so this indicates that bc and ab must have a common tangent point b right at the rear of the contact patch such conditions do not hold and a kink may be at c thus it can be stated that for a rolling tire the slope of the equatorial line is continuous at the frontage of the contact area but not necessarily at the rear consider this element of a 
equatorial line let the lateral direction deflection may be indicated as y and the distance uh, measured the undistorted equatorial line may be x i didn't mention here i just want to mention so here to o point here the distance may be x so the lateral force applied at the center of the tire may be fy the derivation of derivative of fy1 may be equal to the lateral direction stiffness ky and the y deflection because of the dx right in an element of the equatorial line bc there is another force component acting in the lateral direction which is uh, due to the tension of the string this component is proposed to the curvature of the equatorial line for small deflection it can be given by do fy2 is equal to minus f uh, t direction of d squared y by dx squared into dx maybe do or d it can be mentioned this normal differential equations d2 where ft may be equal to lateral direction stiffness into lr squared so lr is a relaxation length so this is equation 1 and this one is 2 from these equations we can say that ky y minus ft d square y by dx square may be equal to 0 so ky y instead of ft we can replace uh, ky l r square d square y by d x square equal to 0 so getting out k y y minus l r square d square y by d x square equal to 0 so let us find the f c corner force or lateral force f y so f y equal to integration of getting back the picture so the difference distance between c to b that is bc is lt by 2 into lt by 2 so the upper limit may be positive lt by 2 lower limit may be negative lt by 2 so lt by 2 lt by 2 in negative right so ky what we have developed is ky y minus l r square d square y by dx square into dx right getting out ky ky minus l t by 2 l t by 2 y minus L R square t square divided by d x square into d x. Just integrating this, we get k y into y mm, into L T by two plus k y L R um, y. Y is actually y one plus y two. So k y equal to y one plus y two into l t by two. You know that, and k y l r into y one plus y two. Please look at this picture. When looking from the top, B C like this, the lateral force will be in this direction of downward. Looking from the top, right? Uh, it actually maintains l two phi r. overall distance between a to d the distance between b to o point is lt by 2 and o to c is lt by 2 totally lt 
so here we get into calculate the m z value right so ky integration of minus lt by 2 to lt by 2 uh, force into distance so distance may be x so force is y minus lr sorry lr squared into d squared y by dx squared into dx so if you integrate this we can get ky lt by 2 whole square divided by 3 y1 minus y2 plus ky lr sorry lr uh, lr plus lt by 2 ky y1 minus y2 whole lr by 2 whole square out of by 3 plus lr lr plus lt by 2 m is equal to this value as you know that m is equal to fy into tp so tp equal to m is divided by fy you know that so we get lt by 2 whole bracket lt by 2 whole square divided by 3 plus lr lr plus lt by 2 whole divided by lr plus lt by 2 whole square which is equal to tp here the cornering properties of tire will be closed there are numerous factors that affects the cornering property as we discussed right okay thank you please have a look on our book Thomas T. Gillespie Fundamentals of Vehicle Dynamics there you can find the theoretical part of coronary properties of tires and tractive properties of tires thank you